Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. There's been a lot of reports up there in Washington, Oregon, California, etc. Earthquakes that are not being reported by USGS. This is supposed to be all earthquakes within the last seven days on this page, 232. So it's on this map here and it covers oh, all the way down there to um, what? the Bay Area, Cobb Mountain, um, Idaho. But on PNSN.org, we have a whole cluster of earthquakes down here by Medford. And these are from uh, yesterday. They're always uh, a day behind before they post them. 16 earthquakes are happened down there by Medford. And I've talked about this area, how we have this locked zone that comes off of the Blanco Fracture Zone. Now there was a 3.7 there. Today, one person did report feeling it. It was 10 kilometers in depth, which is about 6.2 miles. They often put 10 kilometers when they're not sure about the depth of earthquakes. To get the exact location, they need to triangulate the location, which they can't do when they're out there in the ocean. On the felt report, looks like the person that reported feeling the earthquake was in Eugene. And I've said about only 10% of the population actually reports any earthquakes they feel. They're getting so common these days. So we have 1.4, 1 1.3, 1 um, another 1.4. And then on Friday, there was 10 earthquakes reported right there on the border with California and Oregon. Looks like the largest was a magnitude 1.4. On Thursday, there was 85 earthquakes reported. Brought the map out a little bit farther. Let's see if we got anything up in Washington. Nope. Uh, looks like uh, Eugene, that area. Um, Albany. Let me make that bigger. Corvallis. Uh, let me make that larger yet. There we have Newport, and I'll bring it over. Looks like the largest was a 1.6, 1.5 also. Yeah, 1.6. Where was that one at? South of Coos Bay. Yep, supposed to be seven days, all magnitude. USGS says they didn't happen, right? Yeah. You know, I went through the 1993 Klamath Falls earthquake. Uh, really didn't have any structure damage. The house was built on a rock foundation. Um, yeah, the house actually slid on the foundation. The porch, which was called the cattle porch, um, separated from the wall of the house and then eventually moved back in. I think three people died in that earthquake. I felt that earthquake before it even came. It was like a, a bump, a foreshock. I felt when we were sitting on the couch, I thought maybe the dog had hit the couch. My husband, my ex-husband, he's now passed. Uh, he, he didn't feel it. And then shortly afterwards, the large one came in. Yeah, originally they said it was like a magnitude 4 or something like that. And over the years, it's been upgraded to um, two shocks, a magnitude 5.9 and 6.0. Yeah, buildings collapsed. Um, the brick buildings, some of them collapsed in Klamath Falls. There was a rock slide. A large boulder came down on um, one of the highways and killed a person. Another one died from a heart attack. I've always been earthquake prepared. Not a single coffee cup that I had mounted on the wall fell from the wall. The local high school, grade school, was closed for about a month because the back wall of the gym, which was brick, had damage. And when the school reopened, I didn't send my kids back to school. They were homeschooled for about a year. Not a single homeowner got assistance from FEMA. The business owners did, but not um, homeowners. Um, when they came out to our little town, which is about 35 miles east of Klamath Falls, um, they told me I was the only person in the entire town that had a supply of water. Yeah, I, that was surprising. Yeah, I was the only one probably prepared for earthquakes. Everything was bolted to the walls, even now. Earthquake locks on all the cupboards. Uh, all the uh, upright shelves are bolted to the walls. 
um, the large uh, TVs are strapped to the walls to a um, um, a stud. I have smoke detectors and extinguishers, first aid kits, you name it, I probably got it. If the poo ever hits a fan, I definitely don't have to be one of the people that rushes out uh, to get food. Um, if there is a large disaster where transportation of food supplies are cut off, yeah, you can guarantee that your stores are going to be empty within a day. They don't keep extra food in the back rooms, not even Walmart. No, Walmart has food delivered every day. Yeah, nothing extra stored in the back rooms whatsoever. Pallets of groceries come in and they have to be put out before the next truck arrives the following day. That's the rule. Evidently, 65% of the population depend upon mama government to come to their rescue if something happens. And evidently, only 29% of the population, which I think is a little high, is prepared for some sort of disaster. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was only like 10%. 85 minor earthquakes that were not reported by USGS on the 2nd. That's a lot of earthquakes. And no, these smaller earthquakes do not release stress, stress the pressure that has built up. No, they don't. It's an indication that something bigger is going to come. And if you don't care about yourself, you think mama government's going to come and save your butts or your kids' butts or your grandchildren's butts or your neighbor's butts. If you're one of the 65% that believe that, you're in la-la land. You're not going to get prepared overnight. you got to do a little bit at a time, which I've been doing over the years. But it's better to start now than to never prepare for some sort of disaster. you got weather, tornadoes, you got volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis civil unrest you just don't know what could happen so what are your thoughts put your comments down below thank you for subscribing uh thank you for watching my videos please stay safe and i'll talk to you later god bless you bye